Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Decking Around Kickstarter Edition. Today we're going to be taking a look at the latest decks to drop on Kickstarter in the past week. Before we jump into it, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And ring the bell. So, let's take a look first at what funded this week. First off, congratulations to the Symbols of Revolution playing card deck. Congratulations to the Generation 1 playing cards, first edition. Congratulations to Ketchup and Fries playing cards. Congratulations to Vampires playing cards, Western Vampires. Congratulations to the Royal Pizza Palace playing cards. Congratulations to Spaghetti playing cards. Congratulations to ZDV2 Retro from December Boys. Is that just fun? That why we got the Yeah, there was a little bit of celebration there. Congratulations cool. to Transfux Playing Cards, second edition, <laughs> which will fund by the time this airs. Congratulations to Benchmark Playing Cards, which will have also funded by the time this airs. And ending the next seven days, we have the Shinto Neko first playing cards for Japan Shrine Cats. We have the Pixel Kingdom playing cards, a 16-bit inspired deck. We have the Crossed Key Society playing cards collection. And we have the Illusorium Bicycle Playing Cards deck. And the Composer's Playing Cards, Johannes Brahms 5 of 7. And now a quick word from our sponsor. All right, so let's take a look at what's coming on this week. First up, we have the Aperture Playing Cards by Gliders Cardistry. Check it out. Printed by USPCC, fulfilled by Gambler's Warehouse. Perfect use of the subtitle there. Did a really good job with it. Uh, $6,000 goal. Reasonable for a single deck, just based off what we're seeing so far. We'll kind of dive into it a little bit more there, see what we got. Time for the Aperture deck was created from a subtle combination of photography and cardistry. All right, so it's reaching out to the right market there. It understands what its market is, cardistry decks. Let's see what we got here. Print run of 1,000 decks printed by USPCC on their premium stock. Uh, crush stock if stretch goal is met. Awesome. Fulfilled by gamblers, custom court colorways, two identical jokers. Love the use of the logos there. Really touches well on the specs out the gate. I dig this. It's kind of like a trippy vibe to it. Yeah. I mean, cool. The aperture is definitely something that's noticeable to a lot of people, even if you're not a photographer. Yeah. Now it's really, really neat looking. Yeah. Cool. I, I dig the color. Nice job showing off the, uh, the quartz there. And again, as they mentioned, kind of recolored, uh, quartz. So standard quartz, but obviously with different colorways on it, gives you a good vibe for it there. And it looks like a nice little, like, Robin's egg blue and a little bit of a lighter reddish pink, which is interesting. I dig that. Cool buck box. Yeah. Goes into some great images there. And I got to say, for being a relatively shorter campaign, they hit all the major points, which I think is great. Um, yep. Touches on the stretch, stretch goals. Goal. Yep. 2,500 over the 6,000 gold to get you to the 2,500 mark for crushed stock. 8,700 gets you to the custom seal. 94. Nice. Great stretch goals on that too because they go above and beyond just that 3,000. It's not just like some short ones there. There's some long-term or so yep. stretch goals, which really help drive that momentum through. And then... Uh -oh. okay. Got some cottage trainers. Yeah. Which I think this is really cool because it kind of touches a little bit on the backstory again as well. It ties into more of the personal side of it, of Cedric and his design, but also his kind of idea with the uh, Sugar Gliders Cardistry de uh, decks there. Really cool. I think, I think there's, a, there's a, a lot of fun stuff in this and it really focuses well on the target segment, which I think is something that we don't always see. So a lot of times we see people yep. trying to say, hey, you know, yeah, this may be a magician's deck, but it fits for X, Y, and Z. Right here, they go straight to the point. This is for magician, or this is for cardists. You know, they really hit on that point well. Yep. All the information's there, which is great. Nice. Make some challenges. What are we looking at for price here? Let's check it out. Fifteen bucks shipped. Oh, Can't go great. wrong. Interesting choice here with the carrot case. Um. 
I would have personally done that as an add-on personally versus a separate tier. But again, I think the good part about it is the deck is included with that tier, so you're still selling a deck, so it yeah. makes sense. Um, there is an uncut sheet tier, though, if you go up. There is. Right there. Yeah, which is kind of strange. It's actually really inexpensive, too. Uh, 24 shift. Yeah, I mean, that makes a little more sense. Ultimately, yeah, I would. This is this is something I really always say, and I think it's one of those things that makes sense. Is uncut sheets do not have a huge demand behind them, and as such, it actually takes away a potential sale from a deck instead of just having it as an add-on. The one thing I did notice, and probably for simplicity's sake, there aren't add-ons in this. So if someone backs this uncut sheet tier, but they also want a deck, it's now a little bit difficult for them to figure out how to get that deck. I would definitely yep. say having the uncut as an add-on and also including, hey, you bought three decks, but you want to have four instead. Here's the cost for an extra one, two, three, five, six, twelve decks. Never hurts yep. because it helps you sell more. Even if only two people buy two more decks, it's two more decks than you would have sold. But otherwise, I think this is really well put together. It's super succinct. It really hits on all the points you need to for the campaign. Nice. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck, man. Yeah, good luck. I'm excited to see how this one plays out. Next up, we have the Be a Hero Action Adventure playing cards. Be a hero, Tyler. 2D art. Action Adventure playing cards filled with 2D art printed by the Nice Place Playing Card Company fulfilled by Gambler's Warehouse. Nicely done. Um, the one th About to see a little bit more and more of... Uh those two listed uh, up in the subtitles. No, oh, which I think is great. I think the one thing I would say on this one, just because there's, and this is for you out there, Luke Wadey, just because there's that orphan on the second line, I would try to reword the first portion of it a little bit so that it all fit on one line. That's the one thing I would suggest there, and that's more of a visual thing than anything. Um, what else we got here, though? 7,300 goal. Reasonable within that range, especially for a USPCC printed. Hits perfect. Uh... Welcome to my campaign. My name is Turner, and these are my action adventure playing cards. Nice gets into that personal touch right from the jump. I like the blue style of it, too. It's interesting to see that contrast between the blue and the red there for the blue on the back design and then the hearts. Mm -hmm. I like the uh, I like the art to it, though. Very kind of looks like a little water, kind of like a watermelon color. Yeah, and it could just be the render coming up like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I really, I dig the design. I dig the layout of the campaign so far. It's very clean. Um, we got into deck specs. Awesome. Fully custom, two ad cards, custom tuck box, printed on high quality classic grade by USPCC, fulfilled by Gambler's Warehouse. Initial goal will be for printing a thousand cards. Awesome. Um, All domestic orders ship for free. Very nice. All right, so you're looking at $15 a deck on the price point, which I think is ship. phenomenal. Yeah, Shoot. shipped. Yeah. So that's really nice. And what are you looking at international for international? So that's still really reasonable. So you're looking at 19 shipped internationally, which is phenomenal. That's crazy. They're going to take a bath on that one. Yeah. yeah I mean, and again, it, it reasonably, you know, from what I can see from the price point, it looks like shipping has kind of been factored into it a little bit there. So it makes some sense. Um, list of card themes. I think that's really cool, too, that they actually give you the story behind the deck and little details on it. Yeah. It's got a it's got a fun like little uh 2D RPG style feel to it. I, I dig it. Yeah, I mean that's definitely what they were going for, so they succeeded in that. Yeah. Interesting. Uh oh, a cat there. <laughs> Where do you see a cat? Is that a cat? Oh, yeah. It's a wolf or a, a fox, fox? yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. And a unicorn. I'm like that. <laughs> Steve's so afraid of cats he cat. sees them in, in shadows. <laughs> <laughs> uh Stretch goals add on perfect nice. add card reveal unlocked at a thousand. All right, so drive a little momentum to it there, and I think that's a good way to utilize a card reveal without it being a primary card. Add cards, not many people are going to be driven to buying or not buying a deck based on the add card. So using that as a, a momentum factor is actually really great. Um, digital character cards unlocked at twenty five hundred. All right, so it'll give options to pick up individual cards, which are really cool. Um, anime poster. Definitely a lot around the theme on the deck, which I think is really cool. I'm looking forward to seeing. All right, so there we got custom number seals at 7,800, uncut sheet at 8,300, and deck of villains at 1,460. All relatively reasonable goals there for the uncuts and for everything else. Um, I think that makes sense. 
I dig the gal. I, I actually dig the use of a separate gallery section to really show off the deck a little bit more and not clutter the main campaign with it. I still feel a little bit of like a subtitle or something to break up just image after image helps a little. So some sort of like, you know, showing off the King of Diamonds, showing off the Tuck, even something simple like that, like a little uh, caption under them helps. I mean, I think having three images of the deck of the Tuck case is a little, uh, you know, a little much. Actually, there's four images of the Tuck case. But I think, um, you know, one is definitely enough. But at least they're good images, which is which is good to see. Yeah, no, without a doubt. And I like to see the uh, risks and challenges filled out nicely here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, listen, I think this is a well-put-together campaign. Looking forward to seeing it. Um, here to get a set of cards and some other treasures. Cool. So there's a little bit of added, like, fun to the, to the tiers themselves, you know, building the theme into the tiers as well, which I think is cool. The one thing... It's really well done with it and I want to point it out is you know you have custom names for the tiers here but it also tells you specifically what you're getting which is something you want to make sure that if you're going to use custom names for the tiers you are explicit and clear with what is actually included which I think they did a great job with here yeah Turner crushed it for sure layout everything did a really good job yeah no it really looks awesome uh yep. yeah nicely done Turner good luck man excited to see how this goes next up we have the Boy playing cards for cardistry. Carefully crafted unique deck of cards for cardists and collectors made by a cardist extremely limited, only a thousand printed. Um cool. I, I would say extremely limited, only a thousand printed would probably do without on this just because that's a standard print run for the most part. While it is limited, it's not like extremely limited per se. Um yeah. I mean, for me, I, I think taking made by a uh, cardist, extremely limited, only a thousand printed. Take that out. Yeah, just that first and, uh, line. Then put yeah. in printed by USPCC, filled by gambling okay. instead. Which printed by card of money in this case, but yeah. Right, right, right. That's what I'm saying. Uh, let's see, what we got here card of money, slim line stock, improved version of the super luxe stock, true B9 finish. Uh, printed by Cardamundi, distinct Japanese inspired deck design, unique faces, simple, elegant tuck, designed specifically for cardistry, which I think it's great. Uh, see, I dig that. If that's the back design, I really dig that. One way back design, but really cool vibe to it. And honestly, great choice to go with Cardamundi on this because with this kind of flowing non border around it, that could have been disastrous with registration issues. So that's going to be cool. I dig it. Um, yeah, that, like an Enzo. So, and ultimately, this is not a playable deck, looking at this, or it is, it is, but it isn't. So, this isn't really a playable deck in the sense that you're, you're missing indices. So, with this focus towards cardistry, the visuals are a really big part of it. But, like, at the same time, I couldn't tell you if this is the one, two, three, four, five, six of clubs, or I'm miscounting, you know? So, it, it, I, I'm guessing yeah. it kind of looks like a six upside down there. And if you look at the seven here, it looks like a seven. So it incorporates the number into it itself. But at the same time, that kind of removes it from the poker playable series. There. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely geared towards cardistry for sure. Yeah, yeah, because like this is an Over. eight and you can see the eight. But like, I'm just picking up on Ooh, that. Joke now. Is... Yeah, no, I really I, I dig the style of this deck. I think the, the watercolor vibe to it is just really fun. Um goes into the numbers there it goes into the tuck i'd like to see a little bit of a closer shot on the tuck well i actually really enjoy this image i think it feels a little too far away to really get a good vibe on it um i would have liked to see some more of the courts i guess because i'm curious if all the courts are unique or if they're all just individual like that it would be fun to see all 12 courts there yeah, otherwise, again, very succinct campaign. Uh, I would mention who's going to be fulfilling because I think that's an important part of it, whether you're going to be self-fulfilling or using a, uh, a professional fulfillment company. It's something valuable to mention there. It also kind of deals with some of the shipping aspect of it. So let's see what we're looking at price point wise. Yeah, 25 shipped. And that's where it really gets a little pricey because you're probably looking at eight nine dollars shipped uh 16 plus yeah you're looking at nine dollars shipped so this is one of those things where i would say 
Using a fulfillment company to help out would probably help reduce the cost pretty significantly there. Or even bringing down the deck price a little bit. All told, this should be a 18 to $20 deck, I would say. High-end, shipped. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, 19, 18, 19 tops. Yeah. No, what, what's, uh, what do we have for early bird? Still looking at 22. Yeah, three bucks cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and I think that's a solid point of, you know, using the early bird there. You do have a $3 price difference, so it is a value to someone to get the early bird instead of the standard. But, yeah, that shipping is a is a tough one there. Um, yeah. Even 20 shipped, I would have been interested in picking up this deck because I do like the style of it, but 25 is a little pricey on it. What are we looking at goal-wise? 78, which, yeah, still falls within that, you know, reasonable price point on goal-wise, um, especially for a, for a Cardamundi... E9 slimline printed deck but yeah that shipping is it's pricey i mean it's even a high goal but i mean you know it is, it's a lot of uh you know design work yeah and well and again though if you, if you factor designer yeah and if you factor in the fact that they're i'm assuming going to be self-fulfilling at a nine dollar chip point that drives up the goal if they're factoring their full shipping into it you know so yeah. definitely something to consider there lucas i would say look at Potentially a fulfillment company, whether it be Gamblers, Murphys, Art of Play, whoever, depending on where you find most of your backers are, that could significantly help reduce that price point there. But otherwise, I think it's a dope looking deck and the campaign itself, it's the points being artistry oriented. Um, I would say the- so go, go up for a sec. Go all the way up to the top. Okay, that just must be like a special lighting on it or something. Yeah. It looks orange there. And then if you go down, it looks blue. Yeah. So it's blue. Yeah, it's a filter. So, yeah, nicely done. On. Good luck. Good luck, man. Next up, we have the Shooters Card Co. USPCC Premium Playing Cards. A set of playing cards combining the passions for professional photography and clean graphic designing. Already crushed their goal. 12,000. Uh, little, little, uh, so two decks. 12,000 for two, two decks. decks. Okay. So yeah, that makes sense. You know, puts you around a little bit six and change per deck, more than reasonable. Um, let's see, what we got here. All started around the time Paisley Christmas Edition came out in Kickstarter 2019. Dutch Card House Company reached out to Mash Fujiwara. Fired promotional content since then. We kept in contact with each other, which absolutely love Dutch Card House and Matt does some amazing photography. So excited to see a, a cool collab here. And based on. Photography. Yeah, and based on photography, and we've seen how well photography decks have done in the past. You know, obviously, that that photography deck earlier in the year or earlier in 2020 was a bit of a, a one off, but I think this is a really surprise. Yeah. That's for sure. You yeah. know, the the cool thing about this is, uh, you know, this is definitely geared towards Canon lovers. Yeah. Um, you know, being the colors of Canon lenses. Um, so. That being said, if, if you're a photography <laughs> enthusiast in any way, shape, or form, black and red are such standard colors. This is not, you know, don't limit yourself by that. If you're a strong Sony lover and you enjoy the deck, pick it up. Still. Hey, go go for yeah. it. We all know the photography world's like, you know. I dig uh, this imagery. Yeah, I dig it. They're doing it. Yeah, no. They, they the features here look map. absolutely great. Yeah. Uh, and again, you know, Diamond Playing Cards has been doing this for a long time. You can see it here, 17 created, and that's just under this one account that they have. They yep. do a phenomenal job with this. They're they're in line with, you know, Riffle Shuffle for having the template down for these campaigns. You have the Black Standard Edition Workers deck. It's great. I love just the story running throughout the entire thing as well. Relatively standard faces, a little board. bit, yeah, recolors. Um, nice full size central pips on those aces though, which looks great. And I love the little, like, yeah, autofocus tracking on all of those. And you have that white is so sharp. I love yeah, it. Yeah. You have the white limited edition collectors. Nice. You know, this is a fun looking deck. They did a really good job building out the campaign around everything there. Um, nice collector's box that kind of resembles, uh, you know, a case that you would collect uh, that you would carry your SD cards in yeah which is really dope and we have this really cool shooters card co um coin as coin. well which is really fun little coin holder cases very cool great add-on section good stretch goals I'd like to see a little more on the stretch goals just because I feel like two is always a little uh 
a little minimal and it looks like we're really close already to hitting that 20,000 euro mark so it's a good chance to get some more stretch goals up there to keep that momentum going then the nice who are we and uses all the great images there for you know gamblers they also i love the fact that they factored gamblers into the bottom of their feature section yeah. like i like that seeing them use that this is also the alternative you know i'm I mean, I don't know if this is an asset they created themselves or something that Gamblers provides, but I think this one in comparison right. to the black background one really blends in a lot nicer, fits a little more cohesively. I agree. So what are we looking at price-wise? 17 shipped for the standard black, which I think is spot on. And then yep. 23 shipped for the collector. Um, now, I think there's some, so go up. Let's see what the is in the collector here. see have all i think there's a breakdown higher up that so there's red metallic ink on it in the faces all right there's matte white finished tux so there's foil on the tux uh oh. yeah red and black hot foil so you have two foils on the tuck embossed plus metallic ink so that drives who's doing the who's doing the tuck boxes i did not Does it notice say up top? i i would assume uh it does not Mention, but I would guess it's probably going to be gamblers as well if they're going through for fulfillment. There's a good chance. Um, yeah, might be something worthwhile. They don't to know. do hot foil, do they? They do hot foil. They do hot foil. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, at least for tuck boxes, they will do hot foil. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that that brings it again. I think you know that 21 to 23 price point on a two foil embossed with metallic ink is reasonable. 23 hits that probably higher level of where I'd see there, but I think that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. a little high, but but uh, definitely still doable. Yeah, no, without a doubt. 35 for two shipped, which isn't bad. Yep. Nice. Absolutely excited. Stuff, yeah, I mean, this is crushing. Yeah, like I said, I think the one thing that I'd like to see on this, because I would guess that they're very close. Yeah, they already surpassed that 20,000 euro mark. So getting some more yep. stretch goals on there for beyond to make sure that you continue that momentum there, I think is the only thing that I would say would be really helpful here. Yay, Canon users. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck in diamond playing cards. Next up, we have the Make 100 3D Neon Playing Cards Travel Edition. Let's check it out. So this is Square Dots 3D Neon Playing Cards for World Travelers with famous monuments or places around the world. Interesting. Yeah. Let's see. I kind of dig the uh, very, like, dark theme to it. Welcome to our first campaign. Square Dots 3D is a compilation of 52 playing card decks that are imprinted with world's most historic tourist monuments and places. All right. So it's a, a fun little travel theme. It's got a one-way back design on it. Um, depending on how much you're going to be using this, obviously, the, the full lead black stock pen chip so something to consider um thousand print run thousand print run required to print so we hope to get a thousand back <laughs> all right so that's that's a <laughs> that's a little bit of a calculation misstep for a first timer there because usually you get people buying multiple decks which hel helps you drive you to that thousand minimum run uh, you know most of the campaigns we see that actually get a thousand backers are some of the, the higher visibility campaigns that end up hitting some of those you know six figure marks but again, first time campaign, so something to learn on there where you obviously want people buying multiple decks, not just a thousand people buying one deck. Um, and even if you get a thousand backers, hopefully they're still buying multiple decks. Uh, now, was that a, like a mini deck? I think it, it so just, these are all renders render. and I think, yeah, it's just a, yeah. a scale issue with the render. It's interesting to see the pips being like so prevalent on all of the cards. In a way that's kind of counter to the numbers. Like to me, this is not really a playable deck. Just because if you look here, the Ace of Spades has five you know mirrored pips on it. You look at the nine of diamonds here for spades. You have the nine yeah, here. Cool. It, it's a little hard to read here because is there four on the bottom oh I no see. so there's Fine. there's I, I got it yeah. okay and so instead of the 10 you have the x there but the weird thing about it is all of the indices are actually in a diamond relief shape which makes it very confusing at first and that's something that i would almost say would probably have been better as a circle versus a diamond or a non-specific suit shape 
you know um yeah definitely confusing yeah square dots so there's the square dots yeah see i mean it's 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 definitely something you have to learn and you have to not only you know do you have to teach people how to play a game if they're not you know familiar with the game but you have to teach them how to read the cards you know yeah which gets to be difficult especially if you're looking for something in travel i mean if you're trying to play <laughs> a simple game of like war but you're not sure what cards you have well i guess in that case suit doesn't really matter but yeah it gets to be a little uh little difficult there so it does look like yeah so there are five and four on the on the nine so it also makes it though a one-way face so one-way back design one-way face um yeah. pretty confusing yeah I, I mean i honestly i dig the potential for it but it definitely is a little bit confusing especially with those like top indices being in a diamond shape uncut sheets available on colors are pretty yeah no i think it's really a very there's a lot of potential on it. it's very visually appealing um it's just one of those things where i think a little bit more work would have probably gotten it to a point where it was more usable as an everyday deck because if it's being geared towards yeah. travel it makes it difficult to make it a travel deck that's not actually playable usable yeah, yeah. to me that right now this sits in a collector's category more than anything yeah. a lot of images yeah good images on it the one thing i haven't seen is we'll use a professional fulfillment company to handle the logistics it would be nice to see which fulfillment company you're using and who's printing yeah, who's printing it? Yeah. Are you ready are you ready to see the cost on this bad boy? Uh, I don't like it when you hype me up like that, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, well, while while we just saw that, I, I kind of peeked over uh, and I saw it. So right. So $38 and... shipped. So this puts this into a astronomical route. And that's 20% off. That's 20% off. Oh my gosh, hold on. Here's the retail. $42. So this is a $16 deck shipped to your house. No questions asked. Uh, this is not a $42 deck. That's just out of the ballpark there. And I think this is this goes to, you know, having a really interesting premise, but not going through all the iterations necessary to refine your design and your campaign. This deck is an awesome start. There need to be changes based on how playing cards are used to make it an actual deck of cards that you would want to use. But also with that in mind, a thousand decks shipped shouldn't cost more than $16 to $20, really $16 to $18 for something like this. I think ultimately, I'm wondering how much of that is like, if I was in France where this is coming from, what's the price point going to be on shipping? It looks the same. Now, five euros if you're in oh, France. So, so they're probably locally fulfilling and like self-fulfilling for everything if most of your backers come from another area that 15 euro shipping is going to kill you you really need to make sure that you are finding partners who are going to be able to fulfill reasonably internationally which means you may have to ship decks to somewhere like gamblers or murphy's or art of play to get reduced shipping within the united states that being said also 25 dollars for a deck of cards to print a thousand is crazy crazy and good luck man yeah uh, you know what? I'll say this is something where there's a misconception with how much profit actually comes out of a deck of playing cards. And with a goal of $5,000, which is more than reasonable, this is something that you could easily get printed with USPCC or Card of Monday and fulfill for $19. And that's where it should have been because you'd get a significant amount more people interested in this deck once the design is redefined as well. So yeah, good luck. Um, I hope you take this back to the drawing board if it doesn't succeed on the first try and really try and find something that works next up we have the mysteries and secrets eight suit deck marked for magic eight deck. yeah okay so it's like i'm playing cards so a magic playing card set yeah which is interesting From way back design yeah one way back design so they're bringing some interesting things they're using like uh symbolism from like freemasonry as the suits which makes it not really a playable deck just because it's confusing the thing that's interesting to me is as a magic deck you want something that's as easily recognizable as possible and for me to say hey this is the ace of diamonds i don't maybe? i don't think this is a, a like a actual standard playing card deck it's a magic deck and you use because it says right here introducing four new suits and i understand that what i'm saying is as a magician this is not a deck you would use it's a mark deck for magicians but with suits that aren't it's 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 like a gimmick deck basically 
what it is. It's something like a memory deck or something to use in your routine rather than a playing card deck. Yeah, I guess it's a it's an interesting take on it because I, I all things considered in my routine, I wouldn't want to be like, hey, look at that. You drew the ace of order of the Red Cross of Constantine. <laughs> like it's a mouthful in that sense. And that's where I'm, I'm, I'm like. I like the design. I actually really dig the back design. I love that purple and gold look to it. I agree. If this you throw another, eh. you throw another triangle with the eye in it, it'd be a dope mirrored back design. Eh, even as a one, what as a one way, I really like the intricacy of it. I think they did a really good job with that. The the usability of it is what concerns me. And unless there's like gonna be some actual like discussion around, hey, this is what like this is how you would use the deck. Like why eight suits? You know? Yeah, I mean, it, it's got to be. Yeah. Also, it, yeah, it doesn't have any. Yeah, I mean, it. it's a very, very, uh, I mean, it's a very low goal, too. So I'm assuming that it's probably being printed with a smaller printer. Um, <laughs> I would say mentioning who's going to be printing the cards is important. Who's going to be fulfilling. But also, like, the price point on this is hurt 32 ship. Um, depending on how much you're printing and where you could be going with this, this is a, just a sick back design. I'd love to see this on an actual deck of cards. Because yeah, I sure. think this could easily fund with Cardamundi or USPCC, no questions asked. It's a dope looking back design. Even if you did this back design with standard faces, this could do really well. Um, the other thing I'd want to see though too is a little bit more about the tuck than just these two front shots. Maybe get a little more depth into it and obviously these are renders, but being able to see a little bit more detail of the sides and the artwork and the bottom and everything would be really cool. Um, and an actual render of that casket they're calling it. Yeah. Rather than a rendered drawing. Yeah, designed to be created. I think that's why, because I don't think they've actually finished that yet. And this goes to a good point. You know, there's there's a reason why you should have your design completed before you go to Kickstarter is because it raises a lot of questions and it kind of puts out ambiguity that will make people uncertain as to whether or not they should back if you don't have everything in line already. That's something that to me is important to consider. And if the design hasn't been created yet, tell a story around that. Why hasn't it been created yet? Do you want to include your backers in the process? Are you running through multiple designs? If you're running through multiple designs, show some of the, the first picks at it, you know, really give people a feel for what it's going to look like. You know, I think, like I said, I think this back design has phenomenal potential, but uh, I think the deck itself needs a little bit of work. So good luck, Matthew I and agree. Michael. Next up, we have the skills of bike. Take 100 poker playing cards. Is that same dude? Last I don't know. The, we had a make 100 last week, didn't we? Yeah, but make 100 is a Kickstarter program. Oh, I know. I didn't know if it was like the same person doing it. Because no. we, don't, we don't see very many make 100s. So. Yeah, I mean, Kickstarter pushes them seasonally. So let's see. Uh... Now, let's see. Bicycle is the most civilized conveyance known to man. Other forms of transportation grow daily with more nightmarish. Only the bicycle remains pure in heart. All right, so it's a thematically bicycle-styled deck without being USPCC bicycle-styled deck. It's an interesting concept. Uh, poker playing cards inspired by early bicycles and women emancipation movement. Okay. Hmm. Interesting combination theme. I'm for it. Let's see what we got here. So I, I don't particularly like bullet points for telling a story. Yeah. Um, the choice was between A, staying small, fast, and local in terms of raising funds and printing, or B, going big and fancy card of Monday USPCC, but with a much higher funding goal and a later end of summer delivery. So What's their funding goal? 1700 oh, okay. So the one thing I will say is there's a reason to go with a bigger well-known brand because it brings a lot more visibility to your company, to your project. With that in mind, though, um, it would still be nice to know who your local printing is going to be. If this is intended to be a usable deck, there can be a significant difference between smaller printers and a well-known brand just because they really understand what it takes to print usable, durable cards. Um, this picture here also with all of the cards is definitely way too small. If you really want to showcase that, you need to do it in a better way where you're splitting it maybe by suit or by numbers versus uh, ports just so that there's a little more visibility. For me, you can't really 
resize the picture easily so you lose a lot of the detail that you're trying to show off with that. You do have your central hips on your aces, which is cool. Yeah. It's an interesting design. I dig the Jokers. Um, shows a little bit of the inspiration on it, which I think is That's really cool. cool. Yeah. yeah I, that. I think this deck has a lot of potential. Yeah. But it, like I said, it would be nice to see who's going to be printing it. Um, who's going to be fulfilling it also. Okay, so... So what's interesting, how the funds are spent doesn't actually go into how you're spending the funds, though. I don't know if you just overlook that, but that's something that you, you have imagery for. I would definitely put in like some sort of pie chart or something to show the breakdown. Um, shows the goal funding. Cool. How to add add ons. Um, 10% of decks produced by this current campaign will be sent to the heroic root based Cycle activist organization chain effect to be used for their funding activities. Very cool. Uh, right. So where are we at price point wise? Twenty dollars shipped. You know, for a relatively standard deck, it's it's what I would consider high. Um, I'd say that the high end of this should probably be around that sixteen to seventeen mark. I like what the deck is there. Um, fulfillment might be able to bring it down a little bit, only because. $10 Canadian is probably what, like about eight bucks US. If you used a fulfillment service, you could probably bring it down to five, which would make this a $17 deck, which would be, I think, more reasonable and more in line, something to consider there. Um, but also, yeah, mentioning who the printer is, mentioning who's going to be fulfilling. If you're fulfilling yourself, definitely mention it as well. I like the inclusion of the social media there, but I think, you know, there's a, a few things here that would definitely make this go further. No. Looks good though. I, I really dig the artwork. Yeah, so. I think the deck has a lot of potential and as much as I understand the desire to be more prompt in fulfillment, I think going with a larger brand would have probably netted a larger backing, which could have been... I think yeah. I think that back design, I'd like to see a little bit more depth in it. Yeah. Um, But it's it's cool. It's good, uh, good direction. No, I 100% agree. Good luck. So yeah, good luck guys. What we got here? Next up we have the Dark Tides relaunch. Let's see what we got. 7,500 gold, limited edition playing cards for octopus and pirate lovers printed by USPCC, fulfilled by Gambler's Warehouse. Yes. Perfect. Uh, pledge of 7,500. Very close to meeting their goal already, which is awesome. 145 backers. I think that's dope. Uh, we relaunched this campaign, Loving Manor of Valor. I don't know so anymore. It's a shame to hear, but also, you know, it's good to bring that personal side to the campaign, you know. And, Loss is always an important part of it, especially for these motivations. You know, I think it's uh, exciting to see how they're bringing this deck back for a relaunch after discussion around, you know, some of the improvements that were necessary there. Touching on the specs, printed by USPC, premium crush stocks are looking at a 2,500 um, print run. That puts the goal a little low in my book. Um, 7,500 for 2,500 decks is pretty... Pretty inexpensive. I mean, cost for deck, sure, but pr shipping then becomes a concern. Um, Black Core Center Layer fulfilled by gamblers, free US shipping. Okay, so they're eating the shipping for the most part there, it looks like. Um, interesting. I love the story behind it. And, you know, we've run through this in the past. I think it's an interesting yeah. looking deck. One way faces on it, but it fits the theme of it. Inter definitely a fun, it's definitely a fun deck. Yeah, it's an interesting uh, color choice for the border there. Yeah. And I like the fact that they're unique. Different. Yeah, they're unique yeah. Court, uh, images for the courts, which I think is great. Uh, the one thing I will say is, renders are yeah, this this one, un, un, yeah. yeah, this one with the queens, you really kind of lose it just because of the angle. It's not very like great visually. You could probably get rid of that one while keeping this lower one. I mean, I, honestly, get rid of all those because they're right up top. Yeah, they're right there. Yeah, you do all have. Yeah, you, you have a duplicate. Yeah. Yeah, I dig it. And uh, the rest of them are great. Oh, that, that that looks really nice yeah, together. Yeah, that, that purple gilding or like magenta gilding looks phenomenal. Uh, that looks really nice. Choice. Yeah. Choice in the color. Yeah, and I think the back design really had a great evolution there. It looks really good. 
Huck box looks fun. Dude, I honestly, I think if they threw bicycle on the top of this tuck, oh, I would fund in a heartbeat. It would rush, totally crush. Yeah. All right, let's see where we're at price point wise. Fifteen shipped. Can't go wrong. If this is your style, this is definitely a fun deck, and at fifteen dollars, that's that's a steal. And there's still some early yeah. birds left at twelve. And that's oh, with that gold twenty five hundred printed, twelve shipped. Yeah. Good luck, man. I hope they, you know, it, you know, great, great changes on the deck. I think it looks great. Um, you know, good luck. What's their, what are they at now? Uh, they are at 5,700. So they're very close they're to their goal. Close. Yeah. Well, good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Fun deck. Yeah. No, I dig it. I think they did a really good job there. And, yep. oh, wow. That's it. Done, huh? What are you back in this week, Steve? Bro. Uh, I'm backing shooters. All right. Um, I think the aperture playing card is, uh, is as well um feeling i'm feeling a very strong uh I'm, camera I'm theme from you. yeah yeah week. yeah i can tell i can tell steve's in the photography mood there i'm gonna tell you that, especially that sh that shooters shooters deck you know it screams cannon yeah. so i'm um, i have to get it, you know? so i'm definitely on board for shooters i like the style i like the simplicity of the back design and the red and black and white great color theme on it um i really dig the koi playing cards just the price point's a little too high for me. I like the Be A Hero Action Adventure. That's right up my alley. Um, I'd be down for that one. And then, yeah. And then Dark Tides. I dig what they've done with it. I think it's a really fun look to it. Um, yeah. I think that's it for me too. Yeah, Dark Tides, Shooters, Boy, and Be A Hero. No? Nice. Yeah. Thanks everyone for checking out this episode of Decking Around Kickstarter Edition. Make sure to drop a comment below and let us know what decks you'd back this week. There were a good amount of new decks. Some, some really aimed towards cardistry, some towards collectors. Let us know which ones you like the most and make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check in next week for another episode of Decking Around Kickstarter Edition. Ring the bell, peace!